Okay, so you're ready to take the plunge. You want to get on the water and you have chosen sailing as the ideal way for you to do just that. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. We are very happy to have you. The make of the boat is not nearly as significant as the amenities and the features the boat is equipped with. Identifying your requirements, determining your financial constraints, and determining your skill level are the most important factors when purchasing a sailboat. With so many options out there, fin keel, full keel, bilge keel, coastal cruiser, so-called blue water sailing vessels, it is incredibly easy to feel overwhelmed before we even start boat shopping. I'm going to solve this problem for you today. Here is the secret. It's not nearly as hard as it seems at first and other people's recommendations generally mean absolutely nothing. If you go on any sailing forum and state you have $50,000 to spend and you're looking to get into sailing, instantly the armchair captains will come out of the woodwork and start telling you all about how you should spend your hard-earned money on a sailing vessel. They recommend boats without even knowing what your needs are or where you're going to be sailing. How incredibly dumb is that? You are so dumb. You are really dumb. Step number one. Stay off of sailing forums. All the information that may be good on sailing forums is so lost in the endless sea of regurgitated nonsensical BS that weeding through it is simply not a wise use of your time. Everything you need to know about choosing a sail vessel is readily available to you through other means. This channel, for instance, is a great place to gather information. Step number two, this might be the most important. You need to spend a lot of time being honest with yourself. While setting off on a world circumnavigation is appealing to anyone, the financial realities along with the time involved make it pretty hard for most people. It's okay to spend your time sailing the Caribbean islands or living in a marina in your hometown while going sailing on the weekends when you want to. We are not getting into sailing to impress other people with our nautical miles covered. No one cares. This is something that is often boasted about on YouTube. Vloggers who happen to have a sailboat pinning the amount of nautical miles covered. Newsflash, I have more than they do, and no one cares. So nobody cares. We need to be honest about our sailing goals. Where is it you want to sail, and what will logistically make sense for you and your family? Or, if you're like me, sail by yourself. Whatever it is that makes the most sense for you and your circumstances. Get a defined goal in place long before you start boat shopping. Are you going to be island hopping in paradise while sipping pina coladas? If so, then we start to look at boats, features, and amenities that will work well for that type of sailing. Do you want to circumnavigate? If so, then we lay out things to look for for that, such as larger storage capacity and so on. Oftentimes people look for more in a vessel than they actually need. It just creates a much higher running cost and there's no need for it. Step number three, experience. What's your experience level? Here's another secret. It doesn't matter. Sailing experience is so easy to get these days, it's laughable. You can go take a few ASA classes and be set. A good place to start if you have no experience at all is the ASA 101, 103, and 104. In the link below, I have a discount for the ASA membership. Go click it, get yourself a discount, take a few classes, and you're done. Once these classes are completed, trust me, you have more than enough experience to start sailing full time. The more you're on the water, the faster your experience will come, and your trips will get longer almost instantly. There is no need to wait around two or three years to get the sailing experience. Sailing is realistically fairly easy. There's some basic concepts to understand, and the rest is just sea time. You only learn how to sail by sailing, not sitting in a boatyard doing a refit. Step number four, where we plan to place our vessel is incredibly important in determining the exact cost of this long before we purchase a vessel. If you're going to be staying close to home to start, then you want to search out all of your local marinas and figure out the cost of getting a slip at those locations. Choose the marina that works best for you. If you are ready to take the plunge into sailing full time, then anchoring out is a far more cost effective way to keep your vessel. If you plan to head out almost instantly and move straight into full time living aboard, then you want to pick a marina that is inexpensive while you get the vessel up to standards before you leave the dock and set out on your sailing adventure. Step number five, taking the plunge into full time sailing. Doesn't matter if you have decades of experience or have completed just the ASA courses. The foundation for your sailing life should be set up the exact same way. 
Once we're ready to head off into the wild blue yonder, what we want to do is set up our first year of sailing ahead of time. No, this does not mean a detailed hour by hour plan or a detailed itinerary. What this means is that you want to lay out the basics of your first year of cruising far ahead of even buying a vessel. Seems wild, I know, but this is the best thing to do. Here's an example of what I mean. Let's say I live in North Carolina. For my first year of sailing, I want to head to South Florida, visit the Bahamas, then the Virgin Islands maybe, and possibly do some island hopping. Sounds like a fantastic first year to me. How far you make it, no one knows. You might hit the Spanish Virgin Islands, fall in love, and decide to spend a year there. That is amazing. However, it doesn't change our foundation. Ahead of boat shopping, we want to get a rough idea of our route. This is very simple. Just pick the places you'd like to stop. At each of those locations, look into the cost of getting a slip, the cost of anchoring, the cost of a mooring ball, the cruising fees, permits, custom costs, and so on. This will all help you with your sailboat buying budget long before you even looked at your first sailboat. All of those things add up. Some more things that you want to research in different locations you plan to go in your first year or would hope to are the cost of haulouts at certain marinas. What repair facilities are available on those islands or locations that you want to go? And who is it that has the best reputation and offers the best bang for your buck? You do not, under any circumstances, while traveling via sailboat or any other means, just walk into some local place and start handing them your money to repair whatever it is that you need. A lot of places price gouge in the world. It's just part of society. Unfortunately, when it comes to tourist areas, a lot of times this happens in most places. Tourists are only on island for a short amount of time. They don't have a lot of options, so they go to the places that is the most convenient. Therefore, unfortunately, oftentimes you are just charged an arm and a leg for the most basic repairs. If your first year of sailing is going to cost you 20k, let's say, it shouldn't, but let's say it does, and that's what you've chose. Now you know when you go in boat shop, you're looking at your first vessel, you know instantly for your first year, you got $20,000 in running expenses without anything outside coming into play, i.e. boat damage or major repairs. So then, now you know kind of where to look as far as your finances go, what the general requirements are, and again, this helps us when we're searching for our vessels long before we've even gone in person to look at a boat. One of the best pieces of advice that I can give you when it comes to setting up a good sailing foundation is to look at it like a big puzzle. We start with the corners, i.e. the foundation, and we work on placing another piece and another piece and so on. Once the puzzle's complete, things are mapped out in a very easy to understand and follow plan. At first, sailing just seems incredibly overwhelming. There's so many options and so many opinions. It's mind blowing. With the internet and social media, it's gotten harder to make sense of it when it should have gotten easier. Now I do discuss this more in depth often, as well as several other money saving tips and tricks on my live streams. Feel free to tune in. I'm gonna have one tonight at 8 p.m. Also, if you need further help or wanna talk more on a one-on-one -on -one basis or something like that, consider becoming a patron. On Patreon, you get access to our members area where I'm available to chat every single day, almost 24 hours a day, realistically. So thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, turn on those notifications, and if you can do me a big, big favor, leave a comment down below. Helps the YouTube algorithm, helps me out. Boom, helps me keep producing content. So thank you so much. I'll catch you tomorrow's episode or tonight if you tune into the live stream.